Do you know where the DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's a round table, DJ round table. And as always, I'm surrounded by some great DJs here. Uh, we do have two who are not here. Uh, one, again, is off visiting family. And so is another one. Uh, they're away from their area. And uh, they're visiting friends and family. And this is where we go back to saying that you need to spend time at this time of year, especially this time of year, with loved ones, friends, family, uh, and enjoying themselves. Uh, parties, celebrations, and not just concentrating the business. You need to take some time for yourself and relax. And uh, speaking of holidays and everything like that, uh, you know, Hanukkah just started, and one of our members who was of the Jewish faith want to wish him a happy Hanukkah. Uh, I believe this is day three? No, it's day seven. Day seven of Hanukkah? Seven or six. I don't know. It started <laughs> a week ago. Started last Wednesday. <laughs> okay, so... It's 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 uh I again not beyond that faith. I'm I apologize, but uh want to make sure you are enjoying Hanukkah and that you're having some fun and uh lighting the menorah every night. Um as myself being Catholic, you know, Christmas is coming up for myself and for most of the people uh in the chat. But again, we want to say happy Hanukkah to you. And if you are a Jewish out there, happy Hanukkah to you and your friends and family, as well as all other holidays to everyone else out there, as well as the Christmas spirit and New Year's coming up for um for us here. Uh, Sixth day of Hanukkah. Yeah. Programming note coming up. Now we will have an episode next week. So next week we'll be uh the last week and it will be off until after new year's and because way new year's falls um monday is a holiday because new year's eve is a sunday monday is a holiday tuesday is the uh, first time back the second we'll be back the second week of january so that first week of january so it's gonna be basically three weeks off that way everyone can enjoy themselves, have fun, uh, recuperate from everything, and uh, spend time with their friends and family and go to all the parties and whatnot happening around their area. And we want to make sure that you do us a favor. Make sure you click that like button. Hit the subscribe button down below when you get a chance to. Give the thumbs up. Click the bell icon. And if you can do that, that would be greatly, greatly appreciate it. And we greatly, greatly help the algorithm with YouTube. And that's the big thing. The algorithm of YouTube fights against us because the fact that we're a small channel. We're not a big channel, which is fine. But the thing is that we want to grow more. We want to have more people come on here and listen to and watch the show. We need your help by clicking that like, uh, that like, the thumbs up, hitting the bell icon, make sure you know it, and tell other DJs. Make sure you tell some others and say, hey, if you watch this show, you know, you may get some information out of it and I can share with whomever you want to share with. We greatly appreciate. Plus also everyone's social media here is down below. So all the links to their uh, YouTube channel, you can click directly on and follow them on their journeys, doing their gig logs and doing everything that they like to do. So with that said, I'm going to start off the episode here with a question for the panel. And uh, ow, I can't get something out of my pocket. Um, with a question for the panel, with it being holiday season right now, and with it being a high engagement season right now, have you seen a increase in inquiries for weddings for next year? So, Dwayne, I'm going to start with you, my brother, just the east of me in beautiful Ohio. Um. You're in the same kind of weather I have, kind of the colder weather with, uh, you know, we start getting snow this time of year and, you know, uh, cold uh, cold weather and fun like that. Um, are you seeing an increase in inquiries for weddings for 2024 or 2025? I saw it um, around Thanksgiving time, but for the last couple of weeks, I haven't had any inquiries. So all mine's been like Christmas parties, but I did, but I did get it a lot like the middle of November. Good, 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 and that's an important thing because we want to make sure that everybody's in, you know getting inquiries. And where are you seeing your inquiries coming from? Are they are they coming from social media? Are they coming more from 
um avenues like let's say the not wedding wire or from venue, wedding wire. venues wedding wire yep yep okay that's good so would you say that um for you for your business that looks like 2024 is shaping to be a good year kind of equal to 23 or would you say as of right now it's looking it could be a little bit more than 23 it could be about the same it could be a little bit less or how do you feel so far about 2024 as far as me because i'm still kind of like newer so people are starting to recognize that i do dj professionally so i'm starting to get inquiries of all kinds so it's picking up for me so that's where it's, i'm having more and that's, that's because I, everybody's starting to see that I'm doing it and then looking at my content online and stuff. And that's the important thing is making sure that people know that you're, I got to move the mic a little bit, uh, make sure that people know that you're available, but also uh, it's kind of nice to see someone who like yourself, who's been around, who's within the past few years, got really having in the DJ business and it's seen that your business is, is growing. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to ask you, there in North Carolina, uh, you have a little bit warmer weather than we do up here. But uh, again, you're the same season we were in, and uh, I'm sure you're getting inquiries. And you again, you do weddings, you do school functions, you do holiday parties, you do all these different things. Are you seeing an increase for inquiries, inquiries for 2024 for weddings or any kind of other event? Um, I've not seen them um, pan out yet, but the website on my traffic has increased. So that that's a good sign. And it's only a matter of time before uh, you know, start getting those calls. But um, yeah, usually, uh, usually Christmas and New Year's. And then right after that is when it starts picking up, usually around January 3rd to 5th, definitely by the 10th, uh, start getting a few more inquiries in. So yeah. Um, Usually right now, it's, you know, it's kind of a slow time right after the holiday parties uh, are ending and, you know, going into the, the holidays. So, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens around the uh, first, second week of January. Are you looking at so far what you are seeing? Are you seeing an increase over this year, about the same, a little bit less or? What do you what do you feel for twenty twenty four? Probably about the same as as previous years. Uh, I would say it's probably probably going to be about the same. Yeah, for me. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to Matt out in beautiful sunny California, who it never rains and it's always sunshine and has plenty of celebrities walking around like himself. Seventy two today. There, well, there you go. Seventy two and sunny. <laughs> so the question to you uh, so far: Have you seen? an increase in inquiries for your business for, for weddings for 2024? Uh, I mean, it's kind of slowed down right now. Like uh, the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas and even a couple days after Christmas is always like slow with inquiries and bookings, but we still have some stuff in the work and works and uh, still getting a couple consults in here or there. So uh, I think we're doing all right. We've got, 46 or so for next year so um yeah and then all the ones are next year are like high dollar so i'm noticing like maybe less weddings but a lot of the ones that i have are like my top packages where they're getting you know lasers and co2 and dancing on a cloud and trust and this and that so uh can't complain but would like to see a bump i mean i was trying to get to 50 bookings by the end of the year um doesn't look well, we'll see. We're at 46. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be a little, I don't know, it's too stressful. January is going to be slow. That's the only thing. Uh, I, I just hope that we get a lot of deposits in because you need to pay rent. That's an important thing. You got you to gotta make money to uh, pay for things. And that's, that's a very, very important uh, subject. And, you know, it's... It's always very important right now. This is the high engagement season. This is where a lot of people, you know, they they get down on a knee and ask their girlfriend yep. to uh, eventually become their wives and or, you know, husbands or whatever it is. And with that right there, when you look at stuff in couples getting engaged and that feel right now because all the holiday parties going on, uh, have you guys ever thought of, you know, again, doing something at a holiday party if you're at a holiday party djing is if someone came up to you and says hey 
I want to propose to my girlfriend. Can you help me with that? Can you play something? Would you do it at a holiday party? If someone, you know, walked up to you and said, Hey, uh, hey, Mr. DJ, Mr. DJ Salsis, uh, I want to propose to my girlfriend here, uh, Mary Sue, or I want to propose to my uh boyfriend here, John. Uh, can you help me with that? And I want to and I'll say uh, I'll say do it somewhere more private. She doesn't want this. <laughs> That's what I'll say. People do it at sports arenas. I you see it plenty yeah. of times. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but I don't know. I uh I mean, sure, I could help him out with that. I've done a, a gender reveal at a wedding before, so what's a proposal at this point? You're not the the wedding the gender reveal that uh had trouble, right? That no, no, no I... planes crashed at mine. Uh this was a, a bride that got pregnant between the booking and the actual wedding so she couldn't drink or anything and she didn't know the gender and only the coordinator and i knew so we did a cool little light show to do go from like pink to green or pink to blue and then uh it was a boy so we made all the lights strobe blue when it was the announced so it was cool but uh i don't know proposal is different what about you jeff if someone came up to you at a uh holiday party that you're a DJ and said, Hey, Mr. DJ, uh, I need to propose to my, uh, my partner and I want to you to help me out. What would you do in that situation? Would you actually, you know, say, Hey, yeah, we can get a song up there. We can do something. Um, or would you say, Hey, you know, kind of like Matt said, do it privately. You know, I'd try to help him out, but I would probably, uh, clear it through the person that hired me. Um, you know, real, real quickly, because it could be a gag. It could be a joke. It could be something, an inside joke uh, that you're not aware of, you know, in an office situation, or it could be something, you know, very much worse. Uh, so I would clear it if they, you know, if the person who hired me said, oh, that's great. They've been dating forever. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I would do it. But, it, you know, it could be something like, oh my God, no, don't do that. That guy's crazy or that girl's crazy. Or, you know, so, you know, and you, you never know. You do not want to be the one to instigate something that goes off the rails. And uh, so I, I would clear it first, but the, the, the holiday party uh, is about the extent of the place I would, you know, offer that or allow that. Now, obviously not a wedding unless the bride is uh, is okay with it but, and knows about it in advance but uh yeah it's it, i would do it if if the circumstances were were decent and that's one of the things that before i get to uh Dwayne get his uh his take on it uh i'm sure we all have run into uh people asking for like birthdays or this or celebrations and that's one of the things like Trace and i always make sure when we talk to our clients is are you doing anything special? Are you calling out someone's birthday? Uh, our wedding uh, at um, the Pavilion at Orchard Ridge in uh, in Rockton, uh, we just did. Um, it was the bride's brother's birthday the same day they were getting married. It was their wedding day as well as her brother's birthday. So we sang happy birthday to him, and she wanted that. Um, you know, grandparents' anniversaries, we've done that with parents' anniversaries and stuff like that. And you know it, it's nice to know that from the uh, from the family and from the uh, the couple that this is what they wanted to to do it. But again, we've had people surprised, and one of the worst ones uh, that we had, Tracy and I were doing a wedding, and this is during dinner, and all of a sudden during dinner we started hearing horns, and then coming through the doors from the kitchen is a mariachi band. And Tracy's running over there to tell them to be quiet. I'm trying to ramp up music, trying to blocked them because we thought it was the wrong room they were like hey wait you're walking the wrong room and it was a family member of the groom um that they, they wanted a mariachi band to celebrate their heritage uh because they're are hispanic and uh they wanted uh this band to come in and surprise the groom and the family and everyone's like what's going on here and it's just one of the things that, you know, when you don't know what's going on, what's happening, it can go, like, people are arrived very quickly. And we always try to make sure we clear things, but it's just, it, it's it's very hard and very difficult sometimes because uh, there's factors of people who don't <laughs> clue you in. And then you got you to gotta basically uh, <laughs> hope for the best and uh, get through it. So, Dwayne, with you, 
if someone came up to you at a holiday party and said, hey, uh, Mr. Dixon, I want to propose to my, you know, my partner, my fill in the blank here. Um, can you help me? What would you do? Um, if it sounds reasonable, I'll do it. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. If it sounds reasonable. But if it's something that if I get that that my spidey sense is tingling, then I'll throw caution to the to the wind. <laughs> Set fire to the rain. <laughs> yeah. And, and well, again, one of the things the, the great thing about you know Mr. Dixon here, if you guys don't know or not, he is also a school teacher. So he can see Tom Foolery way in advance than a lot of other people can, because teachers have that sixth sense. A lot of times, as well as a lot, if you're a parent, parents get that too. Uh, Jeff, myself, our parents, um, and you know, Dwayne's around kids, you know, teenagers and kids, and sees stuff and uh, with family and everything like that. And I'm sure uh, Mac probably has a little bit of it too. But a lot of times, you're, you hone your expertise in certain areas, and uh, teachers uh, they will spot that tomfoolery a mile away. Same thing with uh, law enforcement personnel and firefighters. People who deal with people every single day and different kinds of people, generally they see they they can kind of smell the uh, the badness coming, and they can that doesn't pass a sniff test. They're like, yeah, uh, hold on a minute, let's let's mm -hmm. let's look through this a little more. Um, but follow up question to it, and I'm gonna go through back through the whole entire group. If they said, you know, okay, I'm going to do this, uh, would you charge them for doing that? Would you say, hey, I need, uh, I need twenty bucks, I need fifty bucks, or would you just just do it to take care of them? How would you, what would you do? Money talks. Money always talks. So you would charge them, uh, Matt? Oh, I thought you meant like if they were offering me money to do it. <laughs> well, no. Would you say, hey, I need, I need, I need fifty bucks to do this. I need. To charge you. No, I would, I mean, I don't know. I'd probably just do it, but also like somebody else said, I would check with the event host first to make sure it's not like out of place. Oh, yeah. But you do that, it's, I don't think an office Christmas party is the best place to propose. No, no. Unless you guys are like co-workers and everybody's in on it, like then okay. But like, you know, you shouldn't date somebody you work with usually. Well, that brings a whole dating people at work brings up a whole entire HR thing, and I'm sure if we had someone from an HR department here right now, they would be telling you how many ways it's bad idea to date someone at work. Uh, their whole entire job HR is to defend the company and protect the company from loss, which includes for, uh, lawsuits for harassment and so forth, and so on. Because sometimes that does go south very quickly, like any relationship, and it's hard when you work with someone and you're dating someone. But uh, Jeff, I'm going to ask you: if, Would you charge someone a fee right there and then if the uh, the vendor, if the uh, your vendor coordinator or you know, the person in charge of the party said, "Yeah, go ahead, do it," would you come back to that person and charge them? Say, "Hey, I need fifty bucks to do this." Would you do that? No, I, I wouldn't charge for that. I mean, that's something that's you know, if it's gonna, if it's legit. And, you know, the uh, coordinator or the person that hired me is, uh, is cool with it. You know, it's basically just give them a microphone and, uh, you know, find a song to play. If they've got a favorite tune or whatever, uh, sure, pull it up if I got it. And if not, then, you know, just find something else. Uh, it's not that, it's no skin off my nose. Um, you know, it takes a minute out of my DJing time, but, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And, you know, if it's if it's legit and it's pretty cool and it goes off and everybody's applauding and, then you know you're kind of in on it to some degree and the hero. So yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna charge for that. I'm not I'm not gonna say give me money if they offer me you know to slide me a ten or a twenty. Sure, I, I will take it. But uh, it's you know getting paid either way you know by the hour, so it doesn't matter. What about you, Dwayne? Would you uh, would you charge for uh, a service? Uh, no, nah. if I decide to do it, I'll just go ahead and do it. I want to go through all the extra stuff. So that that's that that is right there. I feel is, I feel most DJs win charge, but unfortunately, there's probably a few out there who would add, you know say, hey, give me a hundred bucks, give me something. You know, um, there's always those outliers. But I would feel most most DJs would be like, oh yeah, cool, okay, let me find out 
what's going on with the people in charge of the party, in charge of the event, and make sure it's cool with them. Once they give the blessing, okay, hey, you know what? You want to go propose to, you know, that the other person, fine and great, no problem, and then uh, go on. Uh, DJ Mikey Mike said, charge double. Oh man, Mike, Mike's mean. I guess in I guess in Pennsylvania they uh, they want to charge for everything there. <laughs> they nickel and dime, I guess. <laughs> Just kidding, Mike. <laughs> and uh, welcome you guys in, in the chat over there talking a little bit. I uh, appreciate you guys being here this evening and having fun. Um, so the next question I'm going to go to is from DJ Aga on, from YouTube. He always gives some great stuff here. And um, uh, LL, not uh, BK. Okay. <laughs> um, well, you can have it your way. Come on, man. You know, Whoppers are great. Uh so DJ Aga, he uh, said here, uh, so I had a plumber tell me that he had a wedding coming up and I needed a new hot water heater and a pressure re uh, reduction valve. He wanted to trade services. So I would, you know, not charge you for X, probably for his labor. Um, he uh, Aga would buy uh, the hot water heater and stuff and then the plumber would install it for no charge. Aga passed on it. Looking back, I'm thinking I would have been, it would have been a good deal. Uh, if I look at the offer, who knows my, any future plumbing issues, I would have to add that. Uh, uh, let's see here. I'm sorry. Who knows any future plumbing issues I would have uh, had uh, that guy uh, go to that guy for services. So basically he passed on, you know, trading labor. Uh, he had, you know, Aga had, would have to buy the hot water here and a reduction valve, and the guy would, you know, put it in for him. And I am, hopefully would take away the old hot water heater or dispose of it or tell him how to dispose of it or whatever. Uh, going, to, going to, like, Home Depot or getting that is, is great. But I will tell you this. Um, I we replaced a hot water heater two years ago. Oh, I'm sorry, in 2020 we did so three years ago, and we went through a licensed plumber because our our village requires a uh, licensed plumber, and the inspector comes out and actually inspects it. We actually get paid pay for a permit because if you want to sell your house, they do a house inspection. They see that you have a furnace installed, a hot water heater, any plumbing work done, like replacing the pipes or something like that. And they don't see that you had a license for it, they hit you with a lot of fines. So I'm trying to preload up stuff so that way uh when we go sell the house, everything is above board and we can get out of here very quickly and not get hit with the exit tax, uh basically. Um, but one of the things that talking to the different plumbing companies is the hot water heaters at Home Depot and Lowe's and stuff like that sell are good quality hot water heaters. But if you want to get a little better hot water heaters that are a little more robust and have a little more metal on them, they cost more, are the ones from the plumbing warehouses and supply houses that plumbers could get. So if I was doing this and I had a plumber who I had to DJ a party or wedding for and trade services with, I would want them to get it from their supply house because they are much more robust than the ones you get at the big box retail stores. Now, to get in the big box retail stores, they're good quality. I'm not knocking their quality, but the ones from the supply houses are better quality. So it's like that good, better, best kind of thing. Um, they're good, but there are better and best hot water heaters. And I'd much rather put a few bucks out and get a little better quality. Now, let me ask you guys this, since he's talking about this uh, service. And we kind of talked about this last time a little bit about trading for things. But if you ran into a situation, what would you do if you were in Aga Shoots? Would you trade your services, your expertise, or him to the plumber to install a hot water heater or a uh, HVAC tech to install a new furnace or air conditioner in your house? You know, you still got to buy the equipment, but the labor is no charge. What would what would you do, uh, Dwayne? What would you uh, do with that? Yeah, that one, I'm not 
quite sure. Because sometimes I'd rather keep it clean where I pay you and then you pay me as opposed to doing the, you know, the friendly things because I'd be worried about it getting jumbled. And sometimes I meant I wanted to say this last week. Sometimes when you do favors or free gigs for people, they seem to be the worst than the ones that pay. They seem because you're doing it, you do doing them a solid, they want everything and they very needy and stuff. So that's my experience. So I try to keep it neat. I I just pay for the service and then you that way. So we can just keep it clean. And that that's a that's a thing is that we again we touched a little bit about that uh, last time when we talked about something very similar to this is that people who get free things usually don't appreciate it. You know, if, if someone gave you a car and you know a nice car, an expensive car, it could be a Ferrari, it could be a a McLaren. You may not appreciate, and if you wreck it, you're like, "Oh, it's just it's just a McLaren. It's it was free. I didn't cost me anything." And that's one of the things that, you know, it can be. Uh, I, I think a uh, deciding factor if you really care about a product or not. And if someone gave you a car here, uh, or uh, whatever it is, give you X Y Z, would you really care about it? Or you know, someone gave you free speakers, or a free controller, or a free computer. Would you, you know, would you care about it as much as we did when you use your own hard-earned money, hard money to pay for it? So I'm going to go to Matt. What do you think, Matt? Would you trade uh, your services for, in, in this case, with a uh, with a plumber or a HVAC tech or something no. like that? To... No, I don't. I don't do trades. I don't do um, anything like that. I mean, if I. Yeah, no. Uh, the only thing I, I don't think I've ever DJed for free in exchange for something. I made the mistake of, oh, it's for exposure back in the day one time and then never again. But um, no, I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, my my parents own a swing set business and he's done like a trade with somebody who's like a service provider for something that they need. Um but yeah, usually that situation doesn't present itself very often. So I would say no. And that's an important thing is that, you know, you, every business is different and mm -hmm. this is not, you know, anything plus or minus on anyone. And you do what's right for you, but every situation is different. Everyone thinks differently than other people. And this is why, you know, there's no right or wrong answer in this. This is what do you think? What do you feel? How, how would you handle it? Um, it doesn't make a right or wrong. And, Again, it's something you have to look at. And then, uh, Jeff, what about you? If someone came to you, if you needed some work done, kind of like Aga here, uh, what do you do? I probably would not. Um, it's just too many things that could go wrong with, especially a service like that provider. You know, they, they install a water heater. You know, uh, six weeks later, something goes wrong with it. You call them. They're like, yeah, I'm done. I, yeah, I, I just install it. I'm not going to come out and fix it. Then what do you do, you know, or then they're like, well, yeah, I'll come out and fix it, but I want to trade again, or now my buddy wants to trade. Yeah. Where, where does it end? You know, just, nah, I just pay for it and then get the warranty and, you know, just get, don't have to deal with um, all the questions, the possibilities that can, anything that could go wrong. So I've never been really approached by anything like that, but um, I would probably turn it down. And that's a slippery slope that you can run down very quickly. Um, and, you know, trading stuff, I, I have no problem with training, uh, some things, but I also look at if I'm going to trade you something, I, you know, am, am I going to get the value back on it? You know, doing a wedding is an important thing. And one of the things Mike just did, uh, DJ Mikey, Mike just uh, pulled up from, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, is it just time for services? So is it just the time for the service you're doing? Would you include lights and all the extras or just your time. So just you standing there, or do you bring your equipment in? What what setup do you use? Do you use really basic setup, just two speakers and maybe a, a very basic light? Or do you do a full lighting service? Do you do your top package with, you know, again, Jeff and I have video screens. You bring your video screen in. Uh, Matt, do you, do you bring your dual, you know, 21s and your uh, big tops and your big light show? You know, uh, Dwayne, do you bring, all, you know, everything you have and, and do it or do you not? 
I would probably say no. Again, that's, that's the other part that has the other question. How far do you go when you start trading this is what you're valued at? And, you know, do you feel you're equal dollar for dollar value with a plumber? It, it, it's a hard question. Um, and I would probably be the same way. Probably would like, I'd rather just pay for it. And, you know, again, they're a licensed plumber. They're, you know, they're, they, they have to be bonded with uh, the village and have to get the uh, license from the village. I want to make sure that, you know, something happens, I have recourse. And that's the important part. Uh, talking about setups and stuff like that, uh, before the show, we were talking um, in the, the green room uh, about uh, some setups. And I had a picture of a uh, DJ with a DJ service. Um, and uh, we were going over it and looking at it and some of the stuff that they had. And I know there's there's tons of stuff on, on social media for bad DJs uh, on Facebook and uh, other areas, people post pictures of, you know, DJs that they're, you know, they have cords or they've outdated gear, outdated equipment, um, bad sound, bad, you know, whatever. You can go through and pick, Nick pick any DJ out there. None of us is perfect. You know, I, 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 after I take a picture, sometimes I see cable management, I see things I'm like, oh man, I could have done that. I could have done this. We all have, you know, our, uh, things we didn't do 100%. And again, you always go back. You always want to improve yourself and move forward. But if you saw this DJ and they were a friend of yours, so you are you you met this guy, you're like, hey, um, I'm going to use the name Jim. I don't know who Jim is. I'm just using a generic name. And I'm not talking about you, Jim, out there. <laughs> I know that Jim watches the show. It's not that Jim. But I'm going to use Jim as a generic name. And Jim comes up to you and says, hey, you know, I'm a DJ, you know, and you become friends, you talk. And then he's like, hey, come to one of my gigs. You call to the gig and you see what we saw earlier for a setup. How would you go about, talk to them about improving their setup and give them help and pointers on improving what they're doing and asking questions? How would you help them to become a better DJ, not, you know, say not not to throw them in the, into the gutter and make them feel bad, but how would you talk to them and approach them to make them a better DJ? So I'm going to start with Dwayne there because Dwayne is the the youngest of the group. I use air quotes there because you have the uh, least amount of time as a business, but you've learned a lot of DJing. And again, you've grown quite a bit, and you've always improved yourself more and more and more as my light goes out. <laughs> Um, what would you do? How would you approach it? And how would you talk to um, that person? I don't see um, what is the reason reasoning for them to do what they do. Like referring to the um, what we had saw earlier. I saw a lot of stuff there, but I'm like, how is that? How did that like help your situation? I just saw a lot of stuff that he that that person didn't really need and try to um see try to see what what they were thinking and where they're trying to go and maybe um give advice on how they can better utilize that whatever they they're bringing so that setup could be a little bit cleaner and more functionable okay uh really quickly mikey mike Says, how come we never see a bad band set up? Uh, they have wires hanging from lights, guitars, and microphones. Everyone comes down on a DJ. This is true. Um, and I have seen band uh, bad band setups that have that, and some of the bands just don't care. And I think that the reason why, like, there's not a bad band like page on Facebook or on other things is because the fact that I, I think that a lot of bands can claim there's too many people, too many hands involved, and, you know, they're moving around instruments. It's hard to run wireless. They, they argue all they want to. I, I would definitely would say a, if I saw a bad band and I knew the band members, I would go up and talk to them. Again, this is not to shame someone. This is to help someone grow. And they may not think about the way, same way you think, and you want them to do better. So, uh, Jeff, if you had a friend that you saw that had a bad setup and 
you're there, what would you do to get into the head that similar stuff to the DJ showed earlier? Yeah, I mean, I would say something. I would probably tone it in a way that would say, you know, you might need to update uh, your setup. Um, that update looks uh, dated. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of antique looking type of lights and um, just basics, uh, you know, the just, you know, everything all together, just it looked kind of old, you know. And if you look at um, the way the business is going, um, you know, it's simpler. There's, you know, you don't see wires. You don't see a lot of light fixtures. They're just, you know, just sometimes two, you know, that, that do the job. It might just be two wash effects or two moving heads. Um, you know, what I would tell that person is if you spent the same amount of money that you spent on that, that entire setup, you could, uh, I, I could point you in a direction that would update this or better yet, just look on YouTube, <laughs> you know, at any one of these guys in this forum or any, any number of people out there, DJs that do uh, gig logs and uh, get some ideas from them. You know, what a, a, a decent uh, updated setup looks like. Um, now they, they might come back with, Hey, this is fine. It works for me. And I don't know, I would probably say that's great. That, that, that's great. But, you know, coming from another DJ's perspective, uh, probably needs to be updated. So, but, you know, if you're making money on it and you're happy and people are paying money to, for you to bring that and set it up and, you know, the more power to you. But, uh, from my perspective, it needs to be updated. And one of the things I always see in those forums for the bad DJ stuff is that they got the gig. Yeah. They got the gig. <laughs> Um, and again, this is, I'm not trying to throw shade on anyone or that, but it's also some people go there and see that they think that's what DJs do. And that's, that's one of the things I think that's why we kind of, as DJs try to self-police ourselves a little bit with other DJs is we look at what they're doing and go, is there a better way of doing something simpler, something easier? And again, we all try to do stuff that we feel it's best for our business. And every different, every area is different. There's different prices, different equipment, different availability for equipment. You know, uh, this, this, this person could be a um, part-time DJ has a full-time job and just does it for beer money. And, or he could be a full-time DJ thinks he's got the best setup. I don't know. I don't know them. Um, but the thing is that, you know, again, you have that, you, you look at stuff and you go, Hmm, uh, DJ Mikey Mike said, I noticed some DJs in my local area that have a top of the line equipment, but the setups are bad. Uh, these DJs don't last long in the industry. Uh, they make a quick buck and dump the equipment in a year or two. Those are people who think it's easy to DJ. I think that's one of your things is that when you have people coming on to DJing, if you're a new DJ, you know, Dwayne's a newer DJ, but if, if you're a, a new DJ, one of the things it's, it's like any business, it's hard work. If you're doing plumbing, you're doing HVAC, we're in a service industry. Uh, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Uh, we're a service company. We're no different than a plumber or electrician, uh, HVAC tech. We don't sell a physical item. We're selling them an experience. We're selling them our knowledge. We're selling them our uh, skills as a event professional. And if that is like Jeff doing a school function or Dwayne doing a wedding or Matt doing a, you know, a birthday party, whatever event that you're doing out there, you're selling yourself as an expert, understanding music, understanding sound, understanding lighting, understanding coordination of that day. Uh, like myself with Tracy, Tracy is a coordinator. She's a time manager. And that's what her function is. Yeah, she helps me sit up. Yeah, she helps reel the carts in, stuff like that. But her job is to coordinate when I handle lights on music side of things. So it's one of the things that, you know, when people get into it, it's hard work. And a lot of people don't realize that it's hard work to do it. Yeah, you're right, buddy. A lot of people don't realize how much um, physical manual labor is involved. You know, you got to pack all that gear up into your vehicle. You know, that, that's a chore right there. Then you got to unpack it at the venue. Then you got to set it up. Then you got to DJ for four hours or two hours or eight hours, you know. Then you got to tear it down and uh, and and then you got to pack it into your vehicle again. Uh, then you got to take it out of your vehicle when you get back home. 
you know, so that it, it's, it's a lot of lifting and uh, manual labor, physical labor. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. They just see you there or see a DJ there, you know, dancing, having a good time, because that's kind of what we're paid to do. Uh, and, and they don't realize, you know, all the, the the back work that goes into it before and after an event. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very and, true. And that's why a lot of them don't last, uh, don't last that long. But but going back to, you know, the um, the setup, I think it's all about perspective because, um, you know, I can see like somebody who has a much nicer setup than mine, look at my setup and probably think the same thing <laughs> that I think about that one that we looked at. You know, I'm sure that, you know, Matt probably could uh, could look at somebody and somebody could look at Matt's setup, you know, because he's got a nice setup, you know, and I'm sure somebody that has a, you know, uh, a fifty thousand dollar gig, you know, set up would look at any one of ours and say, "Yeah, that's that's uh, that's cheap looking." You know, it's all about perspective. Yeah, this this is very true. So, Matt, what about you? What do you what do you think if that was that was your friend? You you know, you made friends with this guy, and uh, you went to a gig with them, and you saw their setup. Uh, what we saw, how would you positively? reinforce them and say hey dude uh and you're, you're probably the hardest one because you're the most critical person i know <laughs> positively well yeah Shoot. not be not be the normal matt uh, dj salsa's you know hardball but actually do it in a, pl a pleasant way let's say they're you're you became real good friends with this person and then after a few years they finally invite you to a gig and you're like you saw a setup like that how would you approach it that you know you want to be friends with this this person and you don't want to burn bridges, but also you want to help them out, make them a better DJ, make them a better person. Um, I mean, I would obviously start by cable management. I mean, if they have what they have, then you could just kind of, you know, do what you got to do um, with what they have. But I would also just more go to work with them to be like, Hey, let's try and sell some of this and, simplify it with as jeff said some wash effects and things like that um i don't know i'm i'm pretty critical so like i mean i i wouldn't be blunt with it i would just say look this looks like trash here's my suggestions uh whatever money you got from this gig let's put it towards that let's sell some of this older stuff if we can if not donate it and then go from there basically yeah th this this is very very true and and i've had i've had people like um, you know, reach out to me through Instagram and, and say like, Hey, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad you called me out for my crappy setup in a mean way. Uh, cause it made them better, it made them realize, I mean, sometimes you just need tough love. You can't, a lot of these. No, groups, yeah, yeah I, I, I totally understand that. But sometimes, sugar sometimes Matt, <laughs> you can be a tough one. <laughs> it's a little too tough sometimes. <laughs> you should have seen me before COVID. I was even more of a dick. <laughs> I, we did the we did the original show on Instagram before COVID. Remember? Did we? Yeah. I thought we didn't start that. Till, well, maybe no, we, did. we started that right. Was before. I in there? Was I in yeah. there before COVID? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, Tommy, he's the one that brought oh, you that's in. Right. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> he's like oh, this guy's times. telling me I'm doing everything wrong. Then he brought you <laughs> brought you in and started talking, and we've been friends ever since. So it's like you know. It's one of the things that uh, that's how that's how far time flies, especially our old days on Instagram versus here on Twitch and YouTube. So mm. Mike has got a few things to say here. Uh, he's written a letter, basically. <laughs> Love you, Mike. <laughs> uh, buddy, you and I know a DJ that has such a low price and takes him four to six hours set up and three hours of tear down. Yes, I know who this person is. But his price is low, so he can't get gigs. Uh, the DJ is willing to travel upstate uh, for the same price and charge for local weddings. And that's one of the things, um, again, he wants to charge what he feels he's value worth. And I, I I know who you're talking about. That's up to him. Um, do I think he's, for what the product I saw, he should be more? Yes. But again, that's up to them to make the decision. And this is a question from him. Would any of you DJs use a MacBook Pro, go buy a MacBook, uninstall Mac's OS, 
and install Windows on it and run it, um, a MacBook running Windows. Now I know that you can run Windows virtually on a Mac and there's a way to do that. Um, you basically- You don't have to uninstall the iOS. Yeah, you can run, you can run you it boot, virtually. Boot straight to Windows. Yeah. But- Yeah, Parallel got that. I had that on my other MacBook before it um, got destroyed. And that, that's one of the things that, yeah, you can do that. Now, usually people who do that are because they work in an environment that has Windows, but they prefer the Mac OS. Um, yeah, leave the, uh, leave the OS on. You had to run in virtual, virtual Windows, basically run like a mini machine inside a machine. Um, but when people do that, usually it's because their industry is dominated by PC, but they like how Mac works and it'll work in the PC stuff on Windows, but then everything else they work in Mac. So all the stuff they normally put use on Mac, they use, but they open Windows up to work on certain things in the PC world because they're a corporation and that corporation deals with Windows products and they may send emails or maybe something else in there, maybe use Word or another Microsoft product um, that's not compatible with uh, Mac OS. Um, now with the M1, the M2, and M3 won't run Windows. I'm not a Mac guy. I'm a PC guy, so I, I have no idea. But uh, would someone here, Dwayne, I know you said you had that before, but would you run your MacBook, because you have a MacBook, would you run your MacBook running Windows, you know, so open a window up, run Windows to run your DJ software to DJ? Yeah, I would just go get a Windows computer if I was going to do that. It's it's like with Windows, you can get, if you're going to do that, you might as well just get a Windows, a PC computer for because you'll get more for less as opposed to paying for a MacBook name. But you can run the program I have, Parallels, you can just have it to it'll boot up OS but have Windows just running. So if you wanted to do that, the only reason I did that was because I had uh, Windows only um, software that I used at school. Other than that, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Well, that's too much of a hassle. Well, yeah, and I, I know that if you're used to Windows going over to Mac, there's a learning curve. There's stuff to learn between Mac and and PC, and that's that's one of the hard things if you're uh, a PC person. And you're going or you know, use another software, it could be Linux, it could be anything. There is a learning curve there, but eventually you get used to it. Um, the the this DJ bought the, the MacBook to look like that he's using a Mac to DJ. Um so he bought the MacBook because I saw the other DJs, including you know, DJ Solstice there, Matt, and all the other cool DJs use a MacBook. Again, I I, I use a gaming computer that has no marks on it. It's a black, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's whatever, you know, you have uh, to use oh, a Mac. Hey, Aaron's here. Uh, I don't trust the that don't use Macs. Well, again, that's, that's your, imagine, thought. imagine your computer needing a windows update right before you're supposed to start the gig. I hate windows so much just for that. Only like that reason alone. Why do you need an update every two weeks? And then you try to pause it and you can't pause it too long. And then your computer stops working. Windows is such garbage. I'm sorry. It is. That, I that, hate that's it. why. So that's much. why I always start my computer up early, and the first thing I do after I start it up, it, at at the gig, is scan. You know, connect to the internet, and then scan for an update. You shouldn't and have to do update, that. <laughs> update. Boom. You don't have to do that. I mean, you can set set your computer. There are settings on all Windows computers that uh, mm. that you can prevent that from happening. So I, you I can tried set, you and can pause it pause it for ten ten days for set up for restart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I came back from ceremony. It was in the middle of updating, and I didn't have a lighting laptop that night because it took about six hours to update. So after that, I swore to never use a Windows computer again. But I have to for my lighting software because it's not Mac based, but. There's any way I could only use Max for the rest of my life? Trust me, I would. Well, yeah, and then uh, Aaron the DJ said, uh, "Whatever works." I like my Max blue screen of death. Yeah, that can happen on PC, um, but that also can happen on other things too. I've seen it on Linux too, uh, Linux computer. Uh, 
They have a uh, pink. Hey, Macs are uh, notorious for overheating in some situations. So then you know, I've never seen it uh, personally, but it, the, it is out there. Um, so in the summertime or if you're in a hot environment, they, they do have a tendency to overheat. I, I don't know about the newer ones. Um, they may have solved that, but uh, I've never had that problem with a PC. But, you know, I'm not out uh, in the direct sun that often either. So. And that's the thing is that uh, I, I want to say Cleveland Terry was at a gig um, and I saw him DJing. Yeah, and he his, had an issue. His, his Mac decided to go nighty night uh, during the middle of a gig because it overheated. And I've heard that from other people because um, uh, Lewis Rossman and the Rossman group on YouTube, he does uh, MacBook repairs and uh, Mac uh, computer uh, and iPhone repair. And uh, one of the things he uh, said that, you know, a while back, I guess they got rid of the fans and the heat sinks are smaller and smaller from uh, Mac because they want smaller and smaller computers. So you don't have the vents on it to the vent and get heat out. So it's, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, you have to look at and go, okay. Uh, Tracy always complains that the, our computers uh, sound like a jet edge about ready to take off. I'm like, yeah, cause they have big fans cooling the processor, make sure the CPU and the GPU are both cooling. And that's the other thing is that, uh, running gaming computers with a big GPU, uh, like uh, the, and virtual DJ, when you're running stems, stems will uh, run on your GPU and having a larger GPU actually is better for stems because it runs quicker on those computers. Uh, but it's like anything else, you know, you have to do what's best for you. Um Aaron says, I have two older Macs and they get really hot. Only one I don't run virtual DJ, Serato and DJ Pro, it gets really hot. So I got the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, big fans, lots of cooling. Uh, and he also said hello to DJ Mikey Mike. Aaron and DJ, welcome to the uh, chat. Welcome to the channel. As always, he, he's been on the show before if you haven't seen him on here, then you're not watching the older episodes. And that's one of the things also to make sure that you go back when we're off for the next, again, we have next week, we have an episode and we're off for a couple of weeks. Uh, make sure you go back and look at uh, old episodes. Make sure you're watching old episodes because there's always great things you can learn and find out. Um, Jeff's, you know, was, was saying that he runs virtual DJ uh, with video mixing and it gets really hot, but I never overheated. And that's an important thing. I, I feel the heat come out of the vents. Um, the fans blow in the air and it does come out good warm hair. But the thing is that, yeah, I never I never ran into an overheating problem. And I've been out in some, some heat. And one of the things I, I switched over to for, for ceremony is a tablet because tablets have a less likelihood of overheating. And you're not really mixing on a, on a, a ceremony. You're more or less just, you know, flowing music. Versus a true on beat mix, uh, beat matching. So uh, one last question for the table. I'm going to start with Matt with this one. Um, in closing, would uh, I know you're a big Mac fan? Uh, would I use but... a PC? No. <laughs> <laughs> would I trust my DJing career on a PC? Absolutely not. Well, again, that's that's what well, you want to do. Question. But <laughs> if you had if you had to go buy a new Mac. Cool. Which Mac would you buy, the M1, M2, or M3? Well, I did just buy a new Mac about a month ago, and it's the M3 Max 16-inch uh, with the, God, I don't even know, more RAM than I know what to do with. Uh, 48 gigs of memory slash RAM. They call it memory now, not RAM. Um, and this one has, I don't know how many cores. More cores than I need. Um, and it's, it's a beast. I mean, the thing is, it's so fast, and it's just... It's the screen is beautiful. That's the other thing. Macs have just beautiful screens. I mean, the richness of the colors and just the speakers on this alone are also just phenomenal. So, um, yeah, I really love this computer. So, yes, I would. I mean, if you're going to get a new Mac, might as well get the best one they have. Uh, although people say that the M2 Ultra uh, does have better battery life than the newer ones um, and compute like in terms of uh, scores for like Geekbench and all those specs, it's like right up there. So, um, but again, this one's a better value, but 
and it has they have it in space black you know i'm a i'm a apple fan boy so anytime they have a special color you know i have to get it jeff what about you would you uh if you had to get a mac which one would you get m1 m2 or m3 um uh it depends on how much money i have to spend <laughs> so i i I, uh, I'm not going to buy a Mac anytime soon. My wife uses all Macs cause she's a uh, creative designer, um, creative director for her company. So she, she uses all Macs for that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm more of a PC guy, but I have iPads for just about everything else. So, um, uh, you know, and, and, and iPhones. So, um, but no, I, I, I'm not planning on buying a Mac anytime soon. So I don't even know which one I would buy. But I know the price would uh, definitely go into that, and you know, it would play play into that. So, okay. Yeah, what for, you what I'm, for what I'm using, a a gaming, uh, a pretty top notch gaming computer. Um, you know, you, you can't beat the price for what I for what I paid for it. So that that's why I have my uh, my computers, and I got them custom built. Uh, I get to pick what specs I want, and so forth, so on, and. Uh, Having uh, 64 gigs of RAM on a computer, um, it really uh, it really beasts out stuff, especially with, uh, I, I know a lot of people who have trouble with uh, uh, stems on uh, Virtual DJ and on Serato with uh, some of the computers, uh, both Macs and PCs. So Dwayne, if you had to go out today and go buy a new MacBook, would you get an M1, M2, or M3, sir? Um, I have to find get the one that's in my budget. So I just recently got a new MacBook. So I got um the M1. Um, and I had and I I was more looking for the um storage space since I had a MacBook um uh, 2013 where you can swap out um the hard drives, but with the new ones, these new MacBooks, you're pretty much stuck with whatever memory and space they have there. So I had to look at making sure I had enough space and it was fast enough to run like my video programs and all that kind of stuff without breaking the bank. So well, one I end up with a M M1 with, I think M1 and it's a um, 16 gig memory, 16 inch. And it's, I think it's a terabyte um, internal um, hard drive. Well, one of the things also um, that I don't like about Macs, not enough USB ports. And one of the things I, I realized when I bought my second uh, computer from uh, um, Zendia Computers is that I actually got less hard drive space. My my first one I got from them has four terabytes. My second one I got was two terabytes. And the reason why I shrug it down because I use an external hard drive and... Um, on Amazon, the Samsung uh, T5 uh, hard drives have uh, been hovering around for two terabytes, 130 bucks, 140 bucks for the T5, which has some robustness to it. They're, they're water resistant a little bit. They have uh, vibration you know, protection and so forth, so on. So you're running a uh, solid state drive that a uh, you hook into your computer via a USB C port or USB A port and run the hard drive off of it. You can store offline as much as you want to onto that hard drive, such as two terabyte or four terabyte. And I actually have a four terabyte I got off of Amazon. I want to say it was like one ninety nine or less. Uh, last I'm trying to think now, and I want to say it was the last time they had Prime Days. And it was brand new in the box from Samsung. Very well worth it. I have it. I use it. I also have another four terabyte regular external hard drive that I see in my use more because it's easier to update that music library because I just take it out, plug in here. Versus taking, turning on the computer, taking the music from here. Because this, this computer here is my li main library. And I copy them onto other hard drives, the music. 
but this is my main library. So I always back everything up and have backups. But the thing is that everything's here, put it onto a thumb drive, take it on a thumb drive, put it onto the computer. I found a lot of headaches versus you buy an external hard drive. I plug it in a USB here, select the files, drag it over, drop them. Boom, I have those extra music into the external drive. I just plug the external drive into the computer. I don't need as much hard drive space on the computer. I want to make sure I have enough hard drive space for the operating system and for virtual DJ and to put some things on there, some photos, some basic stuff on there in case something should happen to an external hard drive. Still have something there, some basic stuff that I can at least get through something, but having an extra hard drive and having two extra hard drives, having redundancy in case something goes wrong is always great to have. So it has come time again. That's after nine o'clock. It's after our time. And I got to thank the panel here for tonight. Another great, beautiful night. And I want to thank you guys all for tuning in as well. So you guys are watching uh, the show and you're sitting back, relaxing and enjoying it. Please don't be afraid to hit that like button and subscribe on YouTube. If you're following here on Twitch, we do this live on Twitch Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock Central Time on Twitch. You can always follow us on Twitch and watch live and ask questions just like everyone here did. Uh, and I see Mikey Mike over there saying, great show. Uh, happy holidays. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, Mikey Mike. And <laughs> also, uh, stay safe and healthy. Uh, of course, we're all going to try and do that. And uh, Darren, Aaron, thank you very much. Have a great night as well. And thank you for checking out and, and checking in tonight. But we want to thank you guys also and make sure you understand next week is the last episode for this year. So tune in and we're going to revisit a lot of questions we had during the year and see if uh, maybe some ideas have changed or thoughts have changed. So other than that, I'm going to do uh, Dwayne. Dwayne, you're going to take us out tonight because Hunter's not here. Please let us out. Peace. Thank Peace you, out. <laughs>